Life in the Trenches by Isaac Withy. This is my research into World War One. To make my project as interesting as possible, the best thing I thought I could do would be to interview a soldier who actually fought on the Western Front in the trenches in World War One. His name is Tommy Withy. This is his story of his life in the trenches. The first questions I had for Tommy were what the trenches were actually like. What was it like to be in them and what did they look like? I worked in the frontline trench, in the support trenches and the communication trenches. All of which you have bullets flying over your head, shells exploding everywhere around you and dead people lying in the middle of no man's land. I then asked Tommy for some more um, details about certain features of the trenches. What the barbed wire was for, why the trenches were zigzagged, and why he only spent a certain amount of time in each of the three places. Well, first of all, the barbed wire was for stopping Germans when they ran up to the trenches if they survived. So then they'd get stuck in them and then get shot down by our bullets. Your second question was, why are they zigzagged? Well, they zigzagged because when you fire a bullet, if somebody got into the trenches here, say, and they had a gun and they fired one bullet out of it, if it was straight, it would go straight through. When it zigzagged, it will hit there. Meaning that it will only, if they do get in, kill few people than all of them. Thirdly, I spent a time in but all of the trenches because they needed us everywhere at certain times. So at some times they would have needed more people in the communication trenches here and more people in the support trenches and more people in the front line trenches. Tommy then drew me this brief outline, this cross section of a trench to show me what it would look like inside. So um, the sandbags here would be to stop enemy shells and they would absorb the explosion. That's why we put sandbag walls. The trench boards were there so that we could fire our guns out of this wall here and wire tangle defences if any German got here they get stuck and get shot down by the opposing bullets these bolt holes here were for when German shells if they came at you you'd have a couple of seconds briefing to just run in if you weren't quick enough you'd be hit by the shell and every, everyone in that area could be severely da injured or killed. I then asked Tommy what life was like in the front line of the trench, where he would spend about two days in every ten. And the artillery. Well, first of all, in the front line, you never got any sleep because you heard shells, bombs and bullets going above your head constantly. And also, you wouldn't get any rest because you'd be on guard. And your body would only half be asleep if you're lucky. When in the artillery line, you were firing massive shells. Which could kill or blow up the enemy. And here you see that we have a picture of that is one of the artillery where one of the shells would have been stored and then we had gas bombs normal bombs and yeah so they could have killed the enemy in so many different ways the sound of the artillery banging and firing the shells were deafening and if you didn't cover your ears quickly enough you could be deaf or shell-shocked
My next question is where did Tommy actually feel safer, when he was in the front line or when he was further back with the artillery? I actually felt safer in the front line because in the artillery line, one, you're not covered, two, you could get your fingers and hands stuck in gauges in the guns, and three, if you dropped one shell, it could kill everybody who's working there. Were the Germans actually trying to shell your artillery at the same time as you were shelling theirs? Yes, they were. They were shelling the front line, the support line, and the artillery line to stop us from getting any weapons through or to stop us from getting supplies like food, water and stuff like that. What were the bunkers where you slept? So, the bunkers are little rooms built into the side of the trenches. Many people think that we slept there, but most of all, we kept our weapons and artillery and food in there, and we usually just slept outside. But also, these bunkers, if we so preferred to, would protect us from bullets and bombs, because they were underground. Were they pleasant places to live? No, they were infested with rats, which carry fleas, and disease, which could kill. And also, they had no floor. So they were mud, soil, rats, which could grow up to 20 centimetres long, which carry massive disease, which could kill a man. I always associate trench warfare with barbed wire, hundreds and hundreds of miles of barbed wire in front of the trenches. Can you tell me how it helped you uh, and how it also made your life difficult? Well, let's start with the bad facts. Well, um, when we wanted to go out and charge at the enemy trenches, we'd have to, one, get out of our trenches, whilst bullets and bombs and shells are firing right past us, so half the men died just doing that. Then we'd have to get over our own barbed wire. And then we'd have to run over no man's land, constantly being shot at. It was not pleasant. I then wanted to know from Tommy, what happened once you got past the barbed wire? What was no man's land like? Well, no man's land was practically death. Here you could see trees which had been blown up by bombs, bullets and fire and gases. And here you see craters which had been made by bombs, but also they were very, very useful to hide in during gunfire. In some places, no man's land was miles wide, and in some, it was only a couple of metres wide, which meant that you could hear the enemy talking. Is it true that at Christmas you actually heard each other singing Christmas carols and actually arranged for a game of football to be fought? Yes, we did, but many men stayed in their trenches and were wary of letting those Germans into them, considering that it could all be a massive trap. I knew that conditions in the trenches were very, very bad. The drainage was poor, and many wet summers meant that soldiers in their leather boots never had the opportunity for their feet to dry out, and it led to a condition called trench foot. What was it like, Tommy? Well, trench foot was a terrible thing to get. To get. I almost got it once. Many men put oil inside their boots to dry their feet out so that they would last longer without getting trench foot. Trench foot could get so bad that it could kill a man and also give their feet nasty disease. Were there not antibiotics to help treat with these uh, conditions? No. In that time, we used to... We lived off carrots most of the time. But luckily, once, Queen Victoria gave us biscuits...
I know from my own studies that World War I was the first war where both sides used modern weapons like machine guns. What was it like to walk at a German machine gun? Well, it was practically suicide considering that there were bullets flying from here and from out here where more would be. So, one, you had to get out of your trench. Two, you had to climb over your barbed wire. Three, you had to run through no man's land. Four, you had to get to their barbed wire. And five, you had to get into their trench. All while, while bullets, shells, bombs, grenades, bullets, everything was firing at you. So one of the new weapons used was um, gas attacks. Um, did you experience this? I did once. I was in a group of seven men and half of them had been brought in by today. We all went out into no man's land, but we heard the whistle as soon as we were out. But we were too far to go back into the trench, so we had to hide in a hole and put on our masks. One of the men dropped their masks down one of the shell holes and th thought that it would be a great idea to go down and get it. And luckily, they were blind for the rest of their lives. Of course, the single biggest thing we associate with World War I is the huge loss of life. One million men from England never came back home. Villages and towns up and down the country have their memorials with the names of the men marked on them. The memorial in Ivy Bridge, the memorial garden in Ivy Bridge. And the fact that we still wear poppies today keeps alive the memory of the sacrifice that these people made.